was, I want to thank the, a wonderful person who invited me, and that is Ms. Kumar Chakravarti, who invited me to another conference and gave me a chance to get a visa, to apply a visa, because you have to have a, an invitation uh, to visit India at all. Uh, so my thanks to Mumaji for inviting thanks to Shubhra, who has invited me to this wonderful visit of yours, uh, medical university. Uh, people like you are, are assured, I always have, are assured that they were wonderful people who laid the foundation of the founding fathers of not only of India, but also of the movement for independence in the British, which both through the Pakistan and India actually shared together. And here I am. Uh, I'm not as to, uh, not a scholar or a researcher, really I'm a creative writer and in that capacity I would do, I have my, whatever I've experienced, I will tell. I've lived in Pakistan ever since I was born. I was very, very small, about 40 days old really, when my mother took me back to uh, that, that part, which is now constitutes Pakistan, that is Sydney. And I've been living there since then. So that has given me, and then I had a chance to live in India for seven long years during Jawaharlal's time when there were cases against me, uh, of in all 14 cases, because there was editor and publisher of a, a magazine, uh, a socio-political literary magazine, so there were 14 cases, and one of them was under section 124A, uh, right? That is uh, uh, sedition. It was an old British uh, uh, sort of section, and uh, the same uh, laws are uh, in place in Pakistan as were made by the British. So probably it's the same case in India also. But you know, that, that carries to capital punishment. Uh, with hanging till death or 14 years later as imprisonment. At that time, I, <coughs> my children were very, very small. Uh, and uh, uh, in any case, I don't like, I'm uh, claustrophobic, and I don't like to be in small places locked up. So I didn't uh, like the idea of going to prison. And then everybody was leaving the country during the next time, as early years. So in 1981, I also decided to leave Pakistan and came to India. And at that time, Mrs. Zendra Gandhi was the Prime Minister who knew me. Because I had met her earlier when she was not the Prime Minister and she had more time. Uh, I had a poet friend in here in India. Uh, Amrita Prisa, who was also a friend of Mrs. Indra Gandhi, and she had taken me to meet her. Because at that time, when Buddha was still alive, uh, who was our prime minister, he was in prison, but, uh, and he uh, was sentenced to death, but who wasn't till then, not then. So we were connecting some, you know, letters for clemency that, is, uh, that he may not be executed. And Mrs. Gandhi uh, gave that letter to me. Which I was, while I was still here, it was Buddha was hanged. And Buddha was hanged, I was in India, right? In Delhi. And uh, I went to told her that letter was right there and I returned. But after that, things got so bad in Pakistan that people began to leave at that time. And uh, we also decided to leave. And then Mrs. Gandhi allowed me and my family to stay in India and uh, give some kind of an undeclared political asylum because uh, she couldn't do it openly because there isn't any such uh, contract or any such thing in your constitution that allows Pakistanis or, or probably people from other countries also 
to take uh, asylum, you know, like you could take uh, asylum in Britain. They have it in their uh, Britain constitution, they have been given asylum, open political, but India at that time couldn't do it. However, he did allow us to stay here, and for which I'm extremely thankful to write and uh, I live here. Uh, and wrote a long, long poem, which I had written in, in Pakistan, but it was uh, completed here, and they actually first published in India. So I had that kind of a relationship with India. I was born there in Meerut. So, uh, and then I've been living in Sin, which is in Pakistan. So, and the end of is a kind of a compliment identity that one carries. But tell you that yes, indeed, part of me is uh, India. I belong to the Indian Muslim community. And, uh, and yes, another part rooted in it is that I'm a Sindhi. I have been a part of their struggle for their rights as equal citizens of Pakistan. And uh, yes, so this is the kind of identity that I have. Um, and my poems also reflect that journey that I have experienced here. And uh, probably you would like to listen to some of the poems, but then I write in Urdu. And some of them may not be able to understand it, as we told, but I try to translate it, right? Uh, so when I came to India, for the first time, after, uh, uh, and that was uh, uh, during uh, the next time that I, I got an invitation for my Shaira, and I came here and saw Delhi for the first time, and that was my first exposure to India, where so I wrote a poem. Uh, I read it out in Urdu, or in Hindustani, or whatever, will you understand it? <laughs> if you don't, it was Delhi, Delhi Chao, Bari Thayri, Meri Puri Kaya Pighal Rahi, Mujhe Gale Laga Kar Gali Gali, Dheere Se Kahe, Tu Kaun Hai, Mai Kaun Hu Maan Teri Jai Ho, Par Bhes Nai Se Aai Ho, Mai Ramzi Pauchi Apno Tar, Par Preet Parai Lai Ho, इतिहास की घोर गुफाओं में शायद पाए पहचान मेरी था बीच में देश का प्यार भुला पर देश में क्या क्या बेल चढ़ी नस नस में लहू तो तेरा है पर आंसू मेरे अपने होठों पर रही तेरी बोली पर नैन में सिंध के सपने मन माटी जमुना घाट की थी पर समझ जरा इसकी धड़कन इसमें कारुंझर की सिस्की इसमें हॉकी देता चिल्टन कारुंझर इधर भी लेक इंसिन इन चिल्टन इधर माउंटेनेस रेंज इन बलूचिस्तान राइट तो इसमें कारुंझर की सिस्की इसमें हॉकी देता चिल्टन तेरे आंगन मीठा कुआं से क्या फल पाए मेरा मन रोगी एक एक रेत नगर से वो मेरा बसते हैं जहाँ प्यासे जोगी तू सदा सुहागन हो मारी मुझे अपनी तोड़ निभाना है तेरी दिल्ली छूकर कर चल तेरे मुझको वापस मुड़ जाना So in this poem, I had called Delhi or India as a mother, right? Which is what I thought about India. I felt that Pakistan as separated from India, like a child uh, is born out of a uh, mother, and then separates, of course. And then it grows, it has it acquires its own personality, right? Still, it has come out of some something. So it is out of India, I felt, that Pakistan has grown, therefore, the mother. 
However, I was very amused to learn that when I came and saw it refuge in India, so the establishment at that time was extremely angry and they in fact distributed this poem among them, Bori. I mean, look, she's a traitor and she's calling India her mother, right? So this uh, became a and it totally uh, ignored that it says that I am to go back. Then it says that I have brought the love of sin and Rajasthan with me in the areas which are not part of India and India has more or less forgotten about it. Uh, so, uh, they just did not care for it and they thought that this was one great crime against my patriotism, which was, of course, totally suspect and they um, said that we always felt that this woman is, a, is an agent of India. That isn't enough for being an agent of India. So, they end with the raw. He is an agent of raw, we always knew that whatever he has been trying to fix. So uh, that is the kind of life I have to be because of you people. <laughs> Just because I had this sort of, I had this kind of feeling for India, which I couldn't help. Uh, who can have the feelings and emotions? They just come on their own. <coughs> there I spent this time. However, uh, see the time that I was spending there was pretty tough. And uh, there were always police investigations, and we were asked to pay, to, you know, give statements and all that. Uh, but as they say, never try to persecute a poet because a poet would always, uh, you know, write another poem against it, against you. So this was more or less true. So that's how I yeah, wore everything. And if every time they came, uh, for house search or to take my statement, so they called me into the police station. I would come back, of course, and feel open and write another poem. So, if you allow me, maybe I could return some of those poems to you, right? For instance, there was this uh, police officer who came to my house and asked uh, to give a statement. In which I should be able to say that uh, I am uh, I'm a truly, <laughs> I'm faithful to Pakistan and Islam. Of all the things. Koon waale betha hai. Kya bian de is koon? Now bian in Urdu literature, poetry is the descriptive uh, form of poetry. Which is, uh, so the bian is in which you state your love and passion, etc. Quote my better hai kya bian ne is ko jan jesi tarpi hai kuch aya na ho paaye wo guzar gayi dil par jo maya na ho paaye so, Okay, by the way, Shubhra, I brought a book with me which has its English translations. So, uh, you need its English translation? No. Wo guzar gayi dil par jo bayan na ho paaye Lo bayan dete hai Haan likho ki sab sach hai Sab durus tilza maat apna jurm sabit hai Jo kiya bohat gam tha Sirf ye na daan hai Kaash vat lot aai Haq ada hua hai kab ये करो इजाफा जब तलक है दम में दम फिर वही करेंगे वो सका तो कुछ बढ़कर फिर वो की छेड़ेंगे बस का दस्त हर मजलूम झूमटे जैसे गाकर फिर वो हर लिखेंगे तीन हजार हर आमिर आमिर डिक्टेटर तीन हजार हर आमिर काम उठे जैसे पढ़कर जीतना है ये कानून मैं कानून इसी तरह का भी बहुत बिंग रन बाय ऑर्डिनेंसेस फ्रॉम हेवन जीतना है ये कानून बागियों के कदमों की इससे धूल झाड़ेंगे आमरी नबुसत है ये निजाम में ऐसा मार अभी चौक फाड़े बस आने वाला है तो दिस इज़ ऑल एड्रेस्ड टू द उद्वार द पुलिस ऑफिसर 
this is what was happening in Pakistan at that time, and uh, a very strange kind of version was being uh, of religiosity was being imposed on the people, and nobody actually cared for it, right? When people could do, uh, whom I used to criticize when he was in power, uh, however, for different reasons, was popular, very popular, very loved actually, leader of Pakistan at that time. And uh, therefore, <laughs> this entire uh, exercise of Islamizing people uh, did not work. And uh, I mean, people were, people were helpless. But uh, they were not taken in by all this. Um, and that sort of thing that was until such time as Benadi returned from England, he had gone into exile himself. And he felt that uh, the time was right for him to return. We were in touch with the year in India and he asked us to return also. So we went back. And actually we arrived in, Pak in Karachi on the very day of our wedding with the uh, Asif Ali Zardari. And from the airport, uh, went straight to the uh, uh, Lima, which is the next day after the wedding. A feast given by the, um, by the bridegroom. So, uh, and then I stayed there. And uh, of course, after that, of course, Yamada died in the airbrush, election in the area. And uh, some people's party won with the company majority. And a very young Benazir at that time, he was about 24, 25, or a little older, a little older than that, but still a very young, inexperienced um, young woman. He was elected as the Prime Minister of Pakistan. However, uh, what was continuing was, uh, and then she uh, gave me, uh, made me the chairperson of a a of a learned body under the Ministry of Education, and so I also went to Islamabad with my children, and uh, I was uh, working there. And then was the time when I began to write. <coughs> That's when I visited Bangladesh also. In any case, this all gave me a chance to study. While I was in India, between eighty-one to eighty-seven. Uh, I had the experience of studying what was happening here. In those days, uh, this uh, Ramdana Bhumi movement was at a full swing, and uh, what I could see. As I said earlier, see, in Pakistan sometimes we wondered why Pakistan was created, you know, why the deal. But the answer to that was in India. Oh, why it was created, or what kind of things were happening here, what kind of forces were struggling to become the dominant uh, forces in our subcontinent at that time. So I had the chance to see this here also. Um, and I, during my stay here, I was mostly associated with the leftist Forces there, the CPM, the CPI, they were, these were my friends in Pakistan, these were my friends in England, and these were my friends here in India also. So I saw this, uh, uh, this extremely, uh, you know, meaningless sort of uh, struggle between uh, the Hindus and Muslims who were all adamant about the uh, Structure, uh, it was an ancient structure, uh, like the Babri Mosque. And there was so much tension, it was being ripped up. Anybody could see this the whole thing. Uh, you know, I thought to both the things. Number one, uh, this wonderful system that you have, which is far better than what Pakistan has uh, experienced uh, or invented for itself. However, it had its uh, uh, shortcomings also because it totally depended upon the uh, a bigger number of votes. Okay? So what I saw was there were you know these forces which wanted to rip up communal feelings, and uh, the non-communal forces 
not uh, actually resisting it, right? Because they had to appear, uh, they had to take part in the election. So nobody wanted to lose the votes of the majority, right? And this is what I also saw. I also saw how in the post-colonial society of India and Pakistan, the electoral system uh, uh, could be degenerated into something else and actually, <coughs> you know, not really, uh, really take people forward, rather it will stand in the way sometimes. Um, because uh, uh, the worst kind of uh, uh, sentiments expressed by people who would call themselves political forces would not be resisted uh, for fear of losing over banks and I could just, you know, see. However, the result on society, uh, this is what the political forces were doing, this is what the state was doing, the state wasn't uh, protecting anybody really or punishing the violators at that time. They were from 81 to 87. So the Indian state was protecting the uh, <coughs> the unprotected people, or even uh, helping anybody. So, no man to make a uh, vaccine. The state has uh, taken vaccine. But there is the state, there are the political, so called political forces, and then there is the society. The vast, fantastic number of people it consists of Hindus, Muslims. Six and Christians, uh, one million religions of the world are here in the subcontinent. So the society was suffering, ultimate suffering was the people. There was so much tension because sentiments, emotions had been built up. So in the, those times, uh, Ipta asked us to go, and uh, there was a lot of tension in Eastern UP. So they asked us to go and uh, uh, organize some vishayras. Uh, they felt that through culture, all this venom perhaps can be countered, right? Uh, so it was me, and I complete them actually. So it was Kathy Arjun, oh, and then there was Gurandar Bani Prabha, and uh, I, I was also part of it, one or two other progressive poets, poets of his time. And uh, then I wrote a poem. It was for the first time that I saw Eastern Yupi. It was uh, lush green and very beautiful. My first exposure to this wonderful land. And uh, I wrote a poem then. It was called Poor uh, Because the train by which we were traveling was called Poor right? So I'm writing it. Ye dhati kitni sundar hai, ye sundar aur dukhi dhati hai. Ye dhani aachal purak ka, tez rafta rail ke saath, hawa mein urta jata hai, lehriya sa lehraata hai. Dur tak, dur tak, hare khet khalyan, ye dhati, Aurat koi kisan, sambhali sar par bhali bhoj, Keli hai khet se ghar ki or, Vohi ghar, jis ki chhat par aaj, Krod ka gidh madra ta hai, Jhapat kar par phela ta hai. Or os se gila hai sabza, Ke gile hai mere do nain, Bade maati patthar ke dher, Vohi masjid mandir ka pher, Tane logo ke tewal dek, Isi dharti par soya bhut, Jaak kar tumhe manata hai, Kabira kuch samjata hai. Okay, in Eastern UP, Great people of the world, I should say, were born like Kabir. This is the place where he has the samadhi of Vasam Buddha. And I've been reading some Buddhism also in those days. So I said, Tumhari minnat karta hai, Aap par seez nivata hai, Kabira kuch samjhata hai, Jahan ho nafrat ke ghamsan, Nahi rehte us jahan man, Nahi karta hai 
नजर रही नहीं झरते हैं पांव राम तुम्हारी मेहनत करता है हाथ पर शीश झुकाता है कबीरा कुछ सर जाता है अच्छा देते वज सरजू नदी क्लोज टू असिया कमल कुंजो पर जहाँ बार खड़े हैं हरे बांस के झुंड गड़ा है गौतम का संदेश किले हैं जहाँ बसंती फूल खुदा है पत्थर पर उपदेश अरे जब तो फिर वो की आन तुले हो से देने पर जान है असली जीत की बस ये रीत कि दोनों जाए बराबर जीत नतीजा खेज और क्यों नतीजा खेज यही अंजाम न समझो वरना जंग तमाम हुई जिस युद्ध में एक की हार वो होता रहेगा बारम्बार न दोनों जब तक मिट जाए न दोनों जाए बराबर हार यही टकराव का है कानून यही गौतम का उत्तम ज्ञान कि जिसके आगे एक जहान अदब से शीस झुकाता है हम ही तो वारिस हैं उसके हमें क्यों बिसरा जाता है तो सजे रहनुमा के सर दस्ता बड़े पाटों के गले में हार जले हैं जिनके चूल्हे रोज भरे हैं जिनके सदा भंडार अरे तू मूर्ख क्यों हर बार जान कर धोखा खाता है लघु में आपना आता है
In Pakistan, things are really bad at the moment. They are so bad that I cannot write poetry about it. Because you see, when there is, uh, uh, I mean, you feel ashamed. You feel ashamed. How will you write poetry about uh, 50 people being slaughtered, they being beheaded, or their bodies being dragged by the Taliban? How can I write a poetry? Will I make a poem out of it? It's too bad to write poetry about at the moment. And uh, Pakistan is going through a struggle of uh, really uh, a life and death struggle for its uh, insane existence at the moment, of what is happening there. So it is the whole creation of themselves. But when, you know, and I'll tell you something, uh, very strangely, for which some of my, my friends, uh, or most of them, criticize me. Is this, is that, uh, you know, in Pakistan there has been a, so, a very strange, because the army has remained in power for so long, and handling the civilian things. Uh, so the army, uh, there has been a strange role reversal in Pakistan. The civilians have become militant and the army has become more, more civilized. <laughs> out, of that, out of that came um, one uh, general, General Parvind Musharraf, who in all honesty, I can say, was the best ruler that Pakistan ever had. The most sane person. He was trying to de-Talibanize Pakistan. He was trying to bring the ISI under the control of the army, which had become totally, uh, you know, uh, I would say, totally uh, free of all constraints during the long Afghan war. It happened. It happened in the US. Like CIA was a state within a state, and many books were written about it similarly. So he tried to do all that, and he really tried to uh, bring some sanity uh, into Pakistani society. And uh, therefore, I really feel I, I, I praised him, I liked him. Whatever he was trying to do, uh, he was the one who actually uh, gave us this law for the protection of women. He restored the fine arts in Pakistan, which is so important. We during Zia's time were completely, you know, banished from Pakistan. So when he came, it was about after a year that I wrote a poem for General Gujarat, uh, we went like this. He, uh, because when he came, he used to smile a lot. Very soon he stopped his smiling, right? موسکرائے <laughs> نام لیتے نہیں کیا نظارہ کیا ارض پامال کا کیا پتا چل گیا سورت حال کا اور ایک قدم بھی اٹھانا ہے مشکل یا خیر کی قوت ہے بہت نادرہ یہ جو پہنوں یہ جو پہنوں اندھیرے میں جھنکار ہے بس اندھیروں کی آپس میں پیدا ہے This is the forces of darkness fighting the forces of darkness here. Yeah. The forces of enlightenment are extremely weak here. Now you know. Ye jo behum andhere mein jhanka acha. Kyu ye sarmaya karo ko bhata nahi. Toh kehte te investment hogi or toh kare. Koi panchi munderi pe aata nahi. Kyu ye sarmaya karo ko bhata nahi. Koi panchi 
मेरे पे आता नहीं और ऐसे हालात दिल जिससे अफसरदा है किसको इल्जाम दे सारे खुद करता है but uh, these are some of the points that uh, we do have to do. A book, a collected the work of my poems till the, uh, till the, till, till the year 2000 is being published in Hindi by Mali publishers. Uh, they had the script now for part of uh, about a year. Uh, so I hope that they would, it's called Sabilano uh, Gohar, right? So these are all my poems till 2000 in it. And it will come out and I hope uh, it will be accessible to you people. You will be able to read it. Right? So thanks. Pakistan in 
society of the Middle East, the Arabs, or even other countries like the Turks. Uh, but our society is different. So this is uh, the issue which these people have to face also. But they are trying to impose it on gunpoint, you know, with a gun on our temples. It can pretty per bandhuk rachkar, manmana jan rahi hai. Or uspe is what the Pakistani army bhi unse jara rahi hai. लेकिन जिस तरीके से उनको बना दिया गया है, उस तरीके से जो सरकार में फैला दिया गया है, आम आदमियों में मिला दिया गया है, तो उनको सिर्फ़ वहीं वहीं स्थान के अलावा दूसरी जगह अटैक करना काफी मुश्किल बन नजर आ रहा है। वेरेस दिया फ्री और जब चाहे वो जिसको चाहे अभी आपने देखा इसको मार डाला so they show their power. Uh, well, they get, some of them are arrested, and some of them are also executed. But it's a, it has become a very, very complicated kind of an affair in Pakistan. And this is the whole thing. However, the army, at the moment, this army, which used to hate us and call us all traitors, is actually an end. Despised all arts, is actually giving protection to all the fine arts and uh, actually begging people to talk of Sufism. Now, are you thinking of Sufism now? But you thought it was against the Islam, you thought it was against Pakistan and the ideology. But they said no, because the very existence of Pakistan uh, is in danger at the moment. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure some people in India might have thought that yes, why not? To help in this country, which is always creating problems and doing horrible things. However, to wish that Pakistan should go to hell is one thing. But to see it actually happening is a different thing. What, okay, if there is no Pakistan, then what next? Why don't you have four Pakistan instead of one Pakistan? This is what might happen. You may have thousands of people marching into India once again as refugees. This is what will happen. And it will certainly be a very complicated thing. Therefore, the integrity of uh, that state as it does exist today uh, is probably helpful for India uh, to keep its sanity and keep its integrity. And then, you know, do something more, more meaningful than keep, you know, shuffling cards uh, of this subcontinent. Uh, this is what uh, I think people here, you know, so able to see. Actually, I was so depressed because I wanted to, I was my heart and my is in Pakistan, right? So, uh, what's happening there that uh, was this one thing. What uh, is, uh, what can one do? And then I called uh, some people from the Progressive Writers Association, and they just said to me that you can make a statement. But as we are going to put on the social media, which actually says that uh, we, the thinking citizens of India, do realize that the political time that the democratic forces are going through in Pakistan. And we want to assure them that in this hour, of, in this dark hour, uh, since independence, probably that is, we stand by their side and we do understand their struggle. This is what we are expecting. So, I think we uh, I was just wondering, I read your, uh, I read Karachi, but I could only read it in English because I didn't understand. Could you read Urdu? And I was struck by the, uh, by the description of the funeral, of the experience of the funeral um, in Karachi in the earlier pages. And I was wondering that perhaps when you read your work or your poems in English or in another language, do you feel at some level some bit of the flavor of the nazakat at some places is not as one would read it in Urdu, perhaps? 
sorry, I didn't uh, quite follow it. Therefore, you use the mind. It's not for the way they are. Hello? Maybe I can be loud enough if you can hear me. I was I was reading some of your uh, some of your works and I read Karachi the book in English and the poems also in English and I was wondering well going through them whether when you read your own work or your poems in English or in another language since you write in Urdu do you feel at some level some bit of the flavor or the nazaka that some level is lost when one reads it in another language or understands it? You know this. Uh, phrase lost in translation is uh, quite often used and yes it is true uh, that uh, somehow our languages do not translate very well into English. Actually I uh, haven't read a good, good, really good translation of any Indian book either. I mean look, think about Tagore. I must be such a great book. But when you read the English translation, somehow it's not at all the same. And uh, similarly, uh, even about prose, what we say, that a lot is uh, lost in translation because you see, people of our subcontinent uh, have a special relationship with languages. You know, that uh, probably Western people do not have. The turn of the phrase that is so important for us is not so important for the Western people and um, therefore it is so difficult but what I feel is that my work can be much better translated into a Indian language like Gujarati, like Marathi, like Bengali like direct translation from Bengali into Urdu must be, so, will be so much more useful that's what I feel a lot of it is lost because uh, uh, because uh, of our special relationship with language. It is not confined to Urdu only, and I'm sure it's uh, equally applicable to most of the subcontinent languages. Yes. Ma'am, can you recite Naya Bharat for us? Naya Bharat. <laughs> But that's supposed to be the last one. And uh, <clears throat> do you want to know me to do anything else? <laughs> Talk to you, listen to you. And let me tell you that I'm also learning a lot. While uh, during this trip of mine, having an interaction with uh, young students. And uh, this is really learning too. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am Disha from School of Medical Science. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Malala Yusuf Zai. Uh, because I, I have seen a couple of uh, programs made on Malala Yusuf Zai by the BBC recently. And what I felt was that in some ways this girl and her father and their entire struggle is getting appropriated by the West. Uh, and I don't know if I'm right about this, so I wanted to know how Pakistani civil society views Malala and the entire uh, and the work that they're trying to do. I mean, the father and daughter, the, the work that they're trying to do. How is it received by Pakistani civil society? And how is this girl viewed? You know, Pakistani civil society is also not a model. In the region of different sections could be different. Uh, for instance, you see there is a general mistrust of the Western people in Pakistan and I believe also perhaps in India. So when they see her being energized and, uh, by uh, the West, uh, so a lot of people do feel that maybe there is something fishy about it, right? Because why otherwise they are praising her? But uh, through the some people become uh, suspicious of uh, what they are up to and what she is up to. However, there are others who, who do understand that the West, uh, the West of Europe as well as the US, 
and having totally destroyed Pakistan. Now, with, uh, and seeing the result, and also knowing that these people will also attack them ultimately. Uh, want to make amends, right? And they want to now support. You could see there is a shift in their policy. In the past, they have been uh, supporting dictators in the uh, post colonial societies, they were independent societies. But they just changed, and now they support the democratic people. Whatever their support, you see, there are people like uh, me or others like me who feel. And as Asma Jahan, he said something which was so wonderful that it's really worth rising in the uh, golden letters in gold is uh, in the precious money. Right? He said, we do not care what America wants or what Africa wants. We want to decide for ourselves what is good for us. Right? Therefore, we don't care what the best is. If they are praising her, fine. If they are not praising her, that would have been equal for us. So we know that she is one great person and that she is a great symbol of uh, um, the spirit of struggle in Pakistan and we love her. I am an undergraduate woman from the Delhi Studies Department. I wanted to ask you, I read your uh, poem in the translated version, uh, which talks about the way, which I am assuming it talks about the Gurkha. I wanted to ask about your perspective on the two antagonistic positions of the women's right to wear a Gurkha and to refuse it if they want to. And what is the situation in Pakistan? In Pakistan, ever since the Saudi a uh, petro dollar has brought more and more <laughs> influence. There are more and more women wearing uh, this long robe. Okay. And uh, uh, but, uh, the, the funny part of it is that now there are all kinds of workers. One says embroidered, one says you know, sequins, one says you know, all kinds of uh, decorations. Uh, and the uh, which are actually much more attractive uh, for men to look at than the uh, uh, not wearing those good And in fact, I once visited Norway some years ago and I was very amused to see that there were in Norway, there were designer burkas. There are designer burkas in Pakistan. This is a part of the fashion. So who can stop this? I mean, the new times are such a challenge for these orthodoxes that they, they, they will have a tough time. I will tell you something which I found very funny. We have, uh, uh, you know, this Eid Milad Nabi, when the Prophet was born, right? Which is very solemnly uh, uh, celebrated. We have Milad in which people stand up and they read out the uh, they read out the salam, okay? And of course, sweets are distributed and the uh, city is decorated with lights and also with buildings. But that was it. Now, in Pakistan for years to all together, the mullahs have been uh, pursuing uh, this musical aim that people will not and should not celebrate the new year, right? So every new year, their squares come out because uh, the young people just go on their motorbikes without silencers and you know, do a great Allah, Allah, they go to the seaside, right, and make a ruckus. But well, enjoy themselves as much as they can. And also do some bhaktami, which goes with it. Like, like you can share their hands of the Okay. So, they, they used to come out every uh, 31st December. They would be out to stop people from doing this. There's no one doing it. This is not ours. This is just, uh, you know, a Western custom. What happened this year was so surprising because at the, when it struck 12, on 
on the day of Eid, Eid e Miladun Nabi, a horde of boys on motorcycles came in this way. <laughs> 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 and they were without they had removed their silences and they were thinking, oh, wow, wow, wow. And, uh, was, and they were dancing. And the mullahs could do anything. They said, oh, what the hell are you doing? Just come here celebrating the birth of the prophet. <laughs> Sounds do not have uh, proper letters 
that you do. So they accepted it. But naturally, the Urdu is very different. Then people from here who went there and settled in Sin, mostly in Karachi, but also in Hyderabad and in other parts of Sin also. Uh, so their language was also not only uh, Urdu. There are many people who went from Gujarat. There is a Gujarati migrant community in, in Karachi also. Uh, so many of them are in NPR also, right? Dr. Sattar, who is their spokesman, is a Gujarati speaker. However, Urdu became associated with the immigrants from India. So there is a status issue there, really, why not? I mean, uh, we are part of the and uh, many amongst them have uh, uh, Urdu as their national language. They are the mother tongue, okay? And then Urdu is an English language. But the language of Sindhi, Sindhi is the Sindhi just as much as Chandra is the language of Karnataka. So similarly, we are part of this continent of it very much like it. And the objective to a condition of training there are not different from here. Uh, similarly, but not all the languages are equally developed, as you would see, maybe here also in India. That I'm not studying, but you would know. Some languages are, have been, for whatever reasons, better uh, developed. That's Hindi, or always a very well, so much older language than Hindi or Urdu. And uh, for instance, uh, uh, with the first to and Persian at one time was common there, not because of the Mughals, but because of their independent uh, relationship with the Kachari kings in Iran. Right? Uh, so that's how uh, Persian became uh, very popular, became a cold, cold language for a long, long time. Uh, and uh, that's what the script would use now. But they don't want to do as the language of sins. They want their own language and are they wrong? No, most certainly not. Now I as a writer, uh, the conscientious, I would say writer, have always supported them. Because yes, if I write my mother tongue, so do they. And uh, they have a right to make it their national or rather provincial language. We call it, still call it provinces in Pakistan as uh, we do. So, the most they can, they can hope is that uh, they, is that they would uh, allow us to become a bilingual province, which is practically, because the Urdu speaking people also number quite, uh, I mean, they have a big number there. Nearly half the population, and nearly, or less than that. In our parts, as census so is very deceptive because of its numbers are always disputed. So everybody says, no, this is wrong, we are that person. We say, no, they are wrong, we are a person who is higher. So that's how it is. But Urdu, Urdu belongs to, to India. That's where it should have its proper place. Should it not? Really, that's where it belongs. And uh, uh, I don't know why and uh, what many adverse circumstances made people rejected when they stopped reading the script. Um, but otherwise, I mean, Urdu lives in Hindi, and uh, Hindi lives in, in Urdu. Therefore, they have a very square relationship with India. And these are the two languages that sometimes appear to and then other times appear to become one. Then again they appear to two and then they again they, are, they somehow become one. This is the reality of uh, uh, Urdu in the relationship here. Um, it should probably be uh, re, you know, addressed by people where it rightfully belongs, which is here in India. So that's how it is. Um, uh, it's a beautiful language, sure. Why not? And it, it has a certain dynamic uh, force. And uh, in Pakistan, it's a link language, naturally. Because uh, a lot of people, like English is a link language. 
in India. Similarly, Urdu is a native language in Pakistan, but it is not the same Urdu as has been spoken or written in India. There, it largely depends upon Persian language. Here, it depends more on the turn of the phrase and on idiom, uh, which are the beauty of Urdu language here. Uh, I think we'll have to close for questions now because uh, I thought we should ask I mean, the real sample to recite some more of a poetry and uh, if I might make a request uh, my personal favorite in Malabi or <laughs> I 
especially a very tough time. Because I was declared uh, uh, an agent of India, a traitor, and a, a traitor of uh, the country, and apostate, uh, somebody who was in acceptance, Islam, etc. There was nobody to defend me. By myself, and it was so difficult. People would not uh, want to make fun of There were many, many years that were spent there. Nobody was willing to give me a job. You know, my going into an office was bad news for them. And there were times when actually, you know, my friends used to collect some money for me to be able to pay the fees of my children. And then I got into this, started by working in an NGO, and on that by of being a uh, started my own NGO, and then that's how I moved uh, along. However, it was not. So, when you say that you have to 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 say that you सिर्फ एक लम्हे में क्या गुजर गए दिल पर मैंने मुड़ के देखा था एक अजीत वीराना गर्दनों का धन्ना था राख थी कि किरके थी वो जो मेरी आँखों से बार बार टकरा कुछ कश आँखों में राख में दबे अंगार मुड़ती सी आँखों में एक शिकस्त की जंगार सिर्फ एक लम्हे में फिर गए निगाहों में माह साल की गर्दिश बीस साल या सदियाँ जिनकी मुस्तरब रूहे खाकड़ा दिखती हैं अपने दिल के सहरा में कोई चीज टूटी थी कोई शह सुलझ गई थी क्या था वो न जाने क्या था फरीब ख्वाहिश का या नजर का धोखा था अपनी सादा लोही पर प्यार अब नहीं आता इसको क्या खबर होगी और हमें खबर कब थी रास्ते में पढ़ते हैं मोड़ बादशाही की बेस तख्त शाही की जिन पे बैठने वाले हक की मुरादों के खून से गुसल करते हैं जो सबूत मांगेंगे हमसे बेगुनाही के क्या सबूत से अब तो याद तक नहीं आते क्या सबूत थे अब तो याद तक नहीं आते वे सवाल थे कितने और इस कदर कमजोर इन पे तिफले नाना भी इस तरह यकीन करते छुप के रोते रहते हैं जाने किन गुफाओं में इतने कमजोर सबूत हैं कोई छुप के रोते रहते हैं जाने किन गुफाओं में इसको क्या खबर होगी हम बदल चुके हैं अब कोतवाल आए तो चश्मो दिल में जा देंगे रास्ते के सारे पूर्ण राह में बिछा देंगे अपने दिल की तरफी से खुद कलाम क्या करती सिर्फ ये कहा हंसकर इतने नौ दमीदा हो अभी अभी तुम पैदा होने लगते हो तुमको क्या सुनाऊ शेर जब लिखी थी ये सतरे कोतवाल बैठा था उम्र कट गई अपनी कोतवाल बैठा है इसको क्या खबर लेके इश्तिया से बैठा तक रहा था वो मुझको मुस्कुरा पड़ी आशिर दिल में ये ख्याल आया कौन सी जान पाया है रंग जिंदगानी का राज दिश्तकामी का राज उस जुनू का जो ले चले खराब होने सारी उम्र का हासिल शायद एक लम्हा है लोग उठते जाते जाए पर जावेदा सजी है बस मैंने फिर सुना दी दोस्ती वो दुआई बैठा है क्या जवाब है
जिससे कि हिंदुस्तान बहुत चीज़ों में अब भी एक मॉडल है कि हम इन जैसे चीज़ों को पाकिस्तान फॉलो करें तो बड़ा अच्छा है मिसाल के तौर पर डेमोक्रेसी मिसाल के तौर पर फ्रीडम ऑफ एसोसिएशन फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच इन सब आज कल पाकिस्तान में भी बहुत फ्रीडम है लेकिन हमेशा तो नहीं रही थी अभी चंद वर्षों के बाद तो फिर जब ये सुना कि यहाँ पर भी वही सब कुछ किया जा रहा है और रिलीजन को किसी के साथ कर ला रहे हैं और ये कह रहे हैं कि भाई एक हिंदू स्टेट बनाना है तो दिस नो माय प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज देर इज मिलियन ऑफ नॉन हिंदू तो वो कोई छड़ी घुमाने से गायब तो नहीं हो जाएंगे और जाइए उनका क्या करेंगे क्या अचार डाल तो तो मैंने अपनी सजन लिखी थी कि वो एंड आई एक्चुअली रोटी डे डॉक्टर आपको इन लाइट ऑफ वे तुम बिल्कुल हम जैसे निकले तुम बिल्कुल हम जैसे निकले अब तक कहाँ छुपे थे भाई वो मोरता वो घाम जिसमें हमने सभी गवाई आखिर पहुंची घर तुम्हारे अरे बधाई बहुत तुम्हारे अरे बस प्रेम पुराने नाच रहे हैं हिंदू राज करोगे सारे उल्टे काज करोगे अपना चमन ताराज करोगे तुम भी बैठे करोगे सोचा पूरी है वैसी तैयारी कौन है हिंदू कौन नहीं है तुम भी करोगे सतवे जारी होगा कठिन यहाँ भी जीना दांतों आ जाएगा पसीना जैसी तैसी कटा करेगी यहाँ भी सच की सांस उठेगी कल दुख से सोचा करती थी सोच के बहुत हंसी आ जाई तुम बिल्कुल हम जैसे निकले हम दो नहीं थे भाई अब जाहिर के आगे गढ़ाए ये मत देखो आगे गढ़ाए ये मत देखो वापस लाओ गया जमा करो तुम आ जाएगा उल्टे पाओ चलते जाना ध्यान न मन पे तू जाए बस पीछे ही नजर जमाना एक जाप सा करते जाओ बारंबार यही दोहराओ कैसा वीर महान था भारत कितना निशान था भारत फिर तुम लोग पहुंच जाओगे बस पर लोग पहुंच जाओ हम तो ये पहले से वहां हम तो ये पहले से वहां पर तुम भी समय निकालते रहना अब जिस लड़क में जाओ वहां से चिट्ठी विट्ठी कर <laughs>